starting off with some buffalo right here at Eco Training Pride Lens. And that's a good thing. That's what we want. So they are slowly, some of them slowly mobile east, southeast, and that is exactly towards where the lions was seen this morning, where we had those lions, and that's also part of our plan is to head back there. We don't know what's going to unfold yet. There's going to be action or not. My name is Chris Erasmus. With me on Camops is Owen Dell, and I've basically laid out my plan there. Find the buffalo, go to the lions, see if there's interaction. Loving the start with the wallowing buffalo. Yes, we're looking at about 28 degrees. The real feel, as we call it, is about 31 at the moment. So it's a, it's a warm day. Not scorchingly hot. But it is warm. And not really much chance of rain predicted for today. Uh, there is some lions that's coming out from the woods. That could explain the sound from the buffalo. Maybe they were being chased there, the rest of the group. Now there she comes out now. I don't think there's anything much going to happen now. I think they're just letting them pass. And perhaps late tonight, maybe make a move again. Ooh, Linda Polly says it's the perfect way to start the day. Coffee and lions. Linda, I'd love to have a cup of coffee now, but it's a bit hot here. How beautiful is this? Absolutely amazing. I know it doesn't, it's a little bit uh, gory with, um, with the blood and all that, but uh, I'm so happy for these lions. At least they made a kill because there is a young female that's just to the left of him. And I'm hoping that she will also get a turn or a chance to feed. But yeah. Got a beautiful male, and is uh, this guy is definitely one of two. Uh, beautiful brothers that's in this area, known as the Mahiwa males. But yeah, if you are a little bit squeamish for all this, please maybe just turn away for a few minutes. All right, well, it looks like the rest of the pride has just come to the kill now. You can see the three sub-adults. So there is two females on the left and the one young male on the right-hand side that is busy now eating as the big male. The Mahiwa male lion, he has decided to push off and uh, I think he's resting somewhere in the thickets now. So he's given the rest of the pride an op um, opportunity to feed on this uh, wildebeest uh, kill. So yes, just the three sub -adults. You see the female at the back end, it's one of the older females. And there's another older one to the right as well. As I say, the way it's looking now, definitely by tonight this carcass will be finished. Well, I guess we just left that line sighting and just down the road, can you believe it? Yeah, we have bumped into a male cheetah. Can you believe this? Of course, uh, this is this uh, male cheetah that we saw the other day as well. As you can see, it's got the collar on. But uh, this, of course, research and uh, all the programs that does run on cheetahs in this area. But yes, oh, there we go. Good afternoon, my boy. No, he is fast asleep. So okay, we're about maybe five, six hundred meters away from those lions. So and clearly this cheetah is not phased about the growling that's happening further on where they are busy feeding on that uh, wildebeest. Uh, yes, uh, this cheetah needs to be careful for those lions. It mustn't go like from yeah, it mustn't go west towards those lions because they are still feeding on that kill. But you know, the cheetah, you know, they've got very good senses as well. Good sense of smell. Hearing, sight, I mean, they are so cute. And um, it'll pick up on that, on those lines, growling and feeding, and those are the smell of the carcass. So, one thing about a cheetah, it will not go and investigate. It's not like a hyena. They'll go and investigate and try and grab some remains. But a cheetah, if he knows there's lions in the area, they will try and avoid that area. It's like a leopard as well. 
That's what I'm saying. Lions are big. And I mean, most cheetahs are fatalities in, you know, in the areas like this and in Greater Kruger Park and wherever the cheetahs do exist and lions. Um, you'll find a lot of their fatalities is due to uh, lions cause a bigger predator. Elimination of competition. Things have just gotten very serious here again. Listen to the leopard growling. At the moment it seems like an incredibly one-sided interaction. The hyena is not at all worried that this leopard is growling at her, that she's coming almost nose to nose with her. All she is concerned about is food. But Langa, the leopardess, is taking this very seriously. She doesn't want this hyena sticking around because this hyena attracts the attention of other hyenas, of other leopards, of even lions. And that's a direct threat to her food, to the meal that she worked so hard for. Oh, here Andabella comes again. Langa's watching her. The hyena's in the same thicket where we had Langa earlier. Khan, I suppose you could say that Ndebele has no respect for Langa. The typical spotted hyena leopard relationship is one on one, especially with the young female, a spotted hyena will win. They're much bigger and stronger. They've got a bigger bite force, they've got a little bit more stamina. And so she wouldn't really need to worry about Langa too much. However, Langa should also not be underestimated. So Ndebele is just a very experienced hyena. She's also older than Langa. So Ndebele is about five years old this year. Langa is only going to be four much later in the year. Ndebele has been independent for a bit, where Langa has only been independent for maybe a year or so. Now, if you are a sensitive viewer, she's busy feeding at the moment. So maybe best not to have too close of a look, but we can see what it is now. It is a young warthog. A very young warthog that she's managed to take. And this is a great kill for her. To get warthogs is not easy, it's quite a dangerous game. So just because that potential threat was close by, what she's decided to do is climb up in the tree and eat. And make sure she takes advantage of this food while she has it, before anyone else tries to steal it. Oh, Chantal, isn't she stunning? Langa is one of the most beautiful young leopardesses I think I've ever seen. She's got this very characteristic, slim look to her face. Very charming, very mesmerizing, but of course those eyes. When she looks up again, have a look at how thick the white and the black accentuates, accentuating marks are around her eye. My brain stopped working there because of the beauty she mesmerized me. And this is a spotted eagle owl, which is often the most common of the larger owls that we see out in the bush felt. But I can't remember the last time I saw a spotted eagle owl here on Juma. So no obviously distinctive markings, relatively sort of drab brown in colour, dare I say. Um, you can see those very obvious ear tufts on the top of the head, which are not in fact ears. The ears are hidden under the feathers somewhere sort of on the side of the head, uh, just under the eyes there. But you can see those lovely facial discs. We were talking about different types of feathers earlier. Oh, what's he got? Oh, jumped on something. What did he grab, I wonder? Jenna, you're very welcome. It is lovely. He's got something. Is it another scorpion? I can't see. I can only see what you can see because we're sitting in darkness. I think he might have 
grabbed himself a scorpion there. That's very cool. But very, very cool to see. First spotted eagle owl I've seen here for a long time. But everybody, thanks for joining us. We will catch up with you first thing tomorrow morning. Have a wonderful evening.